Hello and welcome to my new video on the Euler Riemann zeta function. In this video I will try to show you the famous proof to the Basel problem which was first proved by Euler and let me first describe you what the Basel problem is. The Basel problem is the sum of this kind 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus and so forth and what Euler found out that this value is equal to pi squared over 6 and if you remember from the definition of the zeta function then this is just the zeta function evaluated at the value of 2 okay Euler first derived this and then was able to show or better to calculate all zeta values of even integers so not integers but natural numbers okay now let's look how did he do this the first thing that Euler knew was the Taylor expansion of the sine function if you don't know how to derive it please watch my videos on the Taylor series and uh, I hope then you will understand it's pretty easy and if you do this these steps for finding the power sum or power series or Taylor expansion of the sine function you will end up having this s minus s to the third power over 3 factorial plus s to the fifth power over 5 factorial minus s to the seventh power over 7 factorial and you do this on as an alternating sum and what you see is that the power of these bodies the powers of these bodies are always odd numbers so we have 1 3 5 and 7 then what you should mention also is that we have in the denominator odd factorial so factorial is ending at an odd number not that this is odd because it's always uh, even actually so we have here 1 factorial 3 factorial 5 factorial 7 factorial and it's an alternating sum okay for the sinus function you can find a very similar Taylor expansion but the sinus function is not that important for us at this moment now what Euler did was he just took this equation divided it by s and instead of using s he plugged in pi multiplied with s okay and he got the following thing he got sine pi s because we plugged in pi s for every s here over s because we divided with s then here on the right hand side what happened is that this s was divided by s gave, gives you just one minus and now what will happen is actually we almost have the same sum only the powers are decreased by one because of, of our division by s okay now what you see here is we have some these powers are always what even we have even powers we have here pi square over 3 factorial s square plus pi to the fourth power over 5 factorial s to the fourth power and minus and so forth it's still in the turning sum now let's just rewrite it so that we have it in a more nicer way so we can see the coefficients so the coefficients are here 1 here minus pi square over 3 factorial pi fourth over uh, 5 factorial and so forth until so if you watch this and say okay you didn't do anything else but dividing and plugging in pi s so that's not a very genial trick okay and if Euler would have stopped here he wouldn't have become a, uh, that famous at that moment <laughs> okay what he did then was Euler proved a very important statement he didn't prove it very rigorously but one can extend this proof very rigorously and show that this is actually true his proof was right and what he said was okay the sine function can or not the sine function but this here sine pi s over pi s can be written in this way and actually what he did was he said okay if we know all the zeros of our function uh, then we can use uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra something like that at this moment it wasn't proof but he just implied that this is true okay now what he said was that if I plug in for example 1 or mi plus or minus 1 I get a 0 here plus or minus 2 I get a 0 here and so forth so all the zeros of this function 
were uh, enclosed in this, okay? So I have a separate proof on this video, and I will hopefully soon do the video on that and upload it so you can see it. But I'll just state it as true, okay? Now what Euler did was, okay, he said, but wow, these equations are looking the same. Let's just expand this, okay? And he knew that if you have a Taylor expansion of a function, then this Taylor expansion, actually a power series, then all the coefficients are the same because the Taylor expansion is unique, okay? Now, what he did it was he just multiplied everything out, okay? If you multiply all the ones, and you, you must imagine this going infinitely further here, if you multiply all the ones with each other, you get the one here. Now, if you multiply this one with this part, you get s squared uh, minus s squared over 1 squared, and if you multiply this body with that, you get minus s squared over 2 squ uh, squared, and this minus here, which you have to imagine with this, uh, this not minus, but 1, if you uh, multiply this one with this body, you get s squared over 3 squared, and so forth, and you can imagine that this, uh, as this product is going infinitely long, you will get all the square numbers here, and now this should remind you of something, this is the zeta of 2, okay, and this is what Euler knew, and this was the reason why he did it, and here in these other brackets, you get other terms, like if you multiply the square parts here with each other, so this with this, you get this body, if you multiply this with this, you get mm, this body here, the coefficient, and this with this, you get this middle part, and so forth. You can imagine the sum is going on. Actually, these are the mixed terms, okay? Uh, mixed quadratic terms, and these are triple quadratic terms, and so forth. And the sum is going further. Actually, these parts are not important for our problem, for the basic problem, but you can use these parts uh, to find other even values of the zeta function, okay? Now what he did was, he said, okay, if the Taylor expansions are unique, then these both uh, coefficients have to be equal to each other. So what he found out was that this strange sum was equal to pi squared over 3 factorial. But what is this actually? What is this 3 factorial? It's actually 6, okay? And this was published in his famous work, which was published in uh, 1735, and made Euler a big star in mathematics. So, but he didn't stop. Like I told you, he didn't stop on the square case. He also, um, I can tell you that I can tell you the not so general way. What he did was actually he just squared this, and then uh, saw that this body was appearing in the sum. Then he could show that or zeta 4, it was equal to pi to the fourth power over 90. This was his method, and he could do this for every power, of, um, for every um, odd value, uh, sorry, even value here, okay? But he also published later on, I think, a better proof, which was more analytical. So let's just stop here and wait for the next video to appear, okay? That's it. So. If you like my videos, please subscribe because it's very important for me to have a lot of subscribers so that I can have the motivation to publish my videos on and have the motivation to create new videos, okay? And if you have questions, like always, feel free to ask. If something was not that clear as it should be, then feel free to ask, okay? And that's actually it. So, see you guys.